school. If I look back, I, I consider myself more of a singer and a little bit of an actor. And I couldn't dance worth a crap. <laughs> Actually, we were doing Footloose in the summer musical program, and the choreographer uh, was like, stop, 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 everybody stop. You have, to, you have to commit to the dancing that you're doing. I mean, everybody, look at Tyler. He doesn't know what he's doing, but he, he's smiling while he does it. At least he's having fun, right, everybody? So let's have fun. When I think about my professional career, I want to be on like every side of the table possible. I want to be in front of the table being an actor and I want to be behind the table being a director and I want to be on top of the table, you know, doing some weird physical thing and under it, you know, setting some light cues or something like that. And I want to like maybe even make the table, you know? And so to be, you know, involved in all of it is just, yeah, I want to do it. I want to do it all. This is um, a box that my mother has uh, put together. She apparently calls it Tyler Stardom Box, which is slightly embarrassing. She's been collecting programs and tickets and newspaper clippings ever since I started uh, doing acting in, in high school. I grew up in Bloomington, Minnesota. I went to uh, Jefferson High School. I went to college at Minnesota State University, Moorhead. I made a decision after I left college that if I wasn't working professionally by the age of 25, that I would have to reevaluate my life. She's got this uh, ticket stub collector here. Just the ticket. Somebody was like, the world needs a ticket stub organizer. And they made it. I've worked with the Guthrie Theater, Theater Latte Da, Children's Theater Company, Chan Hassan Dinner Theaters, Minneapolis Musical Theater, Flying Foot Forum, Bloomington Civic Theater, which is now Artistry. I think the biggest folder in here is Cabaret, which kind of was one of my biggest shows here. Playing the MC in Cabaret was kind of the turning point for me. Latte Da, Peter Rothstein, and Denise Prosek took a chance on me. I, I had had some great roles before that, playing Bat Boy and some great roles out of Chan Hassan, but that never really to that caliber. To that point in my professional career, it was the role that I was like, I'm gonna like kill this role. I'm gonna like start eight months early and like do all this research. And it was sort of a, a turning point in my process too because I was so passionate about it. And now I'm just like always working early and working a few months ahead if I can and get the script and memorize or read a book or whatever. No, mom, there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. I like, uh, Cockney's pretty, I like Irish a lot. There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. Uh, there's nothing I wouldn't, there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. For you. <laughs> Being off book and having like some semblance of a character like figured out before you go into a rehearsal process, you're more likely to find that deeper, more meaningful, more impactful performance. If there was a monster or an ogre or anything bad like what was after you, I'd rip it apart with me bare fists so wood. There's a little hard part in there. Or any, anything, anything, anything. There it is. Nothing's gonna harm you, not while I'm around. Nothing's gonna harm you, no sir, not while I'm around. Demons are prowling everywhere. Nowadays. I will take my phone to a rehearsal or like a plunk through session with whoever the musician, the pianist might be for the piece. And uh, I'll record it, uh, make a little track, and then bring it home so I can uh, sing through it. Demons are prowling everywhere nowadays. And so they are, dear. I'll send them out in, I don't care. I got away. Of course you do. So one of my most recent projects was uh, Sweeney Todd with Theater Latte Da. We performed at the Ritz Theater, uh, and I played the character Tobias. And I think it was my third show with Theater Latte Da specifically. I'm working with uh, Sally Winger, Mark Benninghoffen, uh, and a lot of great, great young talent. He's that a fighting for a king, a wondrous sweet, and no party. 
I think there is a little bit of physicality in every role I play. Whether that's intentional or not, I think it's just sort of where I live. I'm always thinking about how a character moves or how he moves from point A to point B. For example, in Sweeney Todd, if my character has a limp and he's sad, like, what, is, what does that mean? Uh, if he has a limp and he's happy, those are still two different things, and it's still exploring those, those two different levels. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that aroma enriching the breeze is like nothing compared to its succulent sauce, and the gourmets among you will tell you, of course. I love performing because I get to entertain. And I think to entertain is, is such like a broad thing. Y you can say entertaining is like you're making people laugh or you're making people cry or you're making people question their reality or you're getting people to have a conversation. And to do all of those things to affect people in their like soul, in their center, in their core, and to be the cause of that, I mean like is just wonderful. Tell the boys I'm on my way. We just got done with the show uh, over at the Ritz Theater in Northeast Minneapolis. I'm driving right now to uh, Uptown to Huge Theater to do an improv show. Definitely two different kind of performing styles. It's fairly easy for me to switch uh, from one role to the other. Yeah, I love it. How you doing? Fantastic. Thanks. In college, there were three guys who wanted to start an improv company. They decided to cast uh, five other guys, and I happened to be one of those guys, and we started a group called Bearded Men Improv. Last time I remember that your big thing was you wanted, you were sick of like ruling, you just wanted to be out and adventure again. Yeah, you want an adventure again. I feel like we could like do it with some of the misogyny too. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Oh, we're doing an improv show called Dungeons and Dragons, the improvised campaign. Dungeons and Dragons is a role-playing game uh, that is commonly held as a very nerdy game. And uh, we, we agree. Welcome to the stage, the wonderful Bearded Men. My name is Alard Recall of Del Rune. I am an elf rogue with the alignment of chaotic neutral. So Dungeons and Dragons essentially have a character that you've created and you are rolling dice to determine like the outcome of a decision that you make. We have a dungeon master sitting off to the side who's rolling dice for us and 20 is like the best skill you could ever have and if you roll a one, it's like you fail miserably. We find Alar in a local tavern where he's being roughed up by a couple of locals because he got caught pickpocketing. All right, all right, boys. I saw you. Oh. You think you're so clever, don't you? Uh, yes, I do. Huh? Well, you're not. You're not clever. Uh, I want to try pickpocketing them again when they're about <laughs> to uh, All right. Three. I think improv is this sort of cleansing thing for me. To get up on the stage for 45 minutes and create something completely brand new, something nobody's ever seen before, and to have it just disappear into the night uh, is, is like a really thrilling experience. I feel like I should look at you and feel something, but I don't. What do you mean? I feel nothing. I got a charmer. <laughs> Fifteen. Tessera. <laughs> I'm really doing the work that I really want to be doing. If I can see my life go in this direction, being a performer, and then being a creator, creating new works, and then being a teacher, and then circling back around and being an actor again, that sounds like a, just a wonderful life. And then I can like die and be happy. <laughs> Home we go. To Del Rune, to the secret, to our family, 
to our future family. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs>